Epcot introduced to the world a lot of new technology when it opened almost 40 years ago on October the 1st, 1982. But it is also responsible for creating one of the most iconic theme park characters ever. Even today, Figment is still pulling a punch and causing frenzy at Epcot's International Festival of the Arts, as Disney fans line up for up to seven hours to buy the new Figment popcorn bucket, which are selling for up to $200 on eBay. The kind, wise spirit of imagination, with his top hat, beard and lovable sidekick Figment, Dreamfinder always knew it only took one little spark to kick everybody's imagination into high gear. So he would encourage children of all ages to use their imagination on the original Journey into Imagination attraction. Journey into Imagination opened on March 5th 1983 and was sponsored by Kodak from 1982 to 2010. The pavilion itself consists of pyramids of glass at odd angles, which, when lit from within at night, presents a unique view. Outside, children and parents are often transfixed by the leapfrog fountains, with plumes of water shooting over their heads to disappear into nearby planters. Some of the kids find themselves getting an unexpected soaking when they leap up to try and catch the path of water spout. Inside, Disney Imagineers were given the near impossible task of trying to portray imagination. Nevertheless, engineering a fascinating look at what the Imagineers could imagine. The jolly red-headed Dreamfinder with his small purple dragon pal Figment were your hosts on this incredible journey. Originally, the featured 3D movie was Magic Journeys. It was followed by Captain EO, which debuted on September the 12th, 1986. And then in 1994, Honey, I Shrunk the Audience made its debut on November the 21st. Captain EO returned to the pavilion on July the 2nd, 2010, a little after the one year anniversary of Michael Jackson's death. On October the 1st, 1999, the pavilion was renamed to the Imagination Pavilion, with a totally revised ride called Journey Into Your Imagination. Imageworks was renamed Imageworks The Kodak What If Labs, and then on June the 1st, 2002, the ride was again changed to Journey Into Imagination with Pigment, with Kodak later on ending its sponsorship with the pavilion eight years later in 2010. This third and latest incantation of the dark ride is now the longest running version of this attraction, with it celebrating its 20th anniversary this year. Prior to the opening of Epcot, Disney were designing attractions to fill the park. As they looked for characters to populate Epcot, the decision was made to revisit an abandoned project designed by legendary Imagineer Tony Baxter. The project was known as Discovery Bay, and it was originally intended for Disneyland. One of the Discovery Bay attractions was titled Professor Marvel's House of Illusions. Professor Marvel was an eccentric scientist who, among his other hobbies, he bred dragons. This original concept was tweaked slightly to become Dreamfinder and Figment in Journey into Imagination, the first iteration of what since became Journey into Imagination with Figment. Imagineer Steve Kirk was also heavily involved in the design of the original Journey into Imagination. This attraction was the brainchild of both Tony Baxter and Steve Kirk. Steve was an Imagineer for Disney theme parks for many years. He was also part of the original design team for Epcot's Wonder of Life Pavilion with Cranium Command and Kitchen Cabaret. 
His other Disney theme park credits include MGM Studios, The Great Movie Ride, and Tower of Terror with his brother Tim Kirk, as well as being lead designer of Tokyo Disney Sea, considered to be many the finest theme park to be ever built. The name Figment was inspired by an episode from the TV show Magnum P.I. Tony Baxter explained that he was watching an episode of the show. In it, Magnum is hiding a goat on Robin Master's property, and the goat is eating all the greenery around the house. When Magnum is questioned about it by Higgins, he replies that it's probably just a figment of his imagination. Higgins responds, figments don't eat grass. This was a light bulb moment for Baxter as he realised he'd found the name of the little dragon in his upcoming attraction. One of Figment's most distinctive features is his colour. He's a purple dragon. However, that wasn't always the case. During the majority of the planning process, Figment was green. Kodak served as a sponsor for the original attraction and they decided the colour was too similar to that of Fujifilm and that is why he was changed to purple. Occasionally you'd also see Figment wearing a yellow sweater with a red trim. It's no coincidence that these are also the brand colours for Kodak. You know what, it's just occurred to me that some of our younger viewers may not be familiar with the brand Kodak. You see kids, back in olden times you took pictures with a camera that used film, which, you know what, I better stop there or I'll be rambling on forever. Just ask your parents kids. As Disney searched for the perfect voice for Figment, they issued a casting call in one of their employee newsletters. They asked for anybody who believed they had a distinctive voice to provide a cassette tape that would display their ability to portray the youthful, restless, mischievous, excitable, daydreaming purple dragon. However, despite the internal call, the role eventually went to veteran American actor Billy Barty. Figment has had three actors provide his voice over the years. The original voice was provided by Billy Barty, a true legend. Barty's acting career began in the 1920s when he co-starred with Mickey Rooney in a series of shorts known as Mickey Maguire. From then he had numerous roles in TV and film over the years, with appearances in Bride of Frankenstein, Gold Diggers of 1933, Legend, Willow, as well as supplying the voice of Batemouse in Disney's 1990 movie The Rescue Was Down Under. Hey little fellow, what happened to you? Oh no, 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 no! Don't hurry. Really. I'll it's get you loose. Careful, so. ah! Are you alright? Yeah, I think so. Okie dokie. Wait, hey, come back! In the 1999 version, Journey Into Your Imagination, Corey Burton supplied the voice of Figment. And in the current version, Muppeteer Dave Goles provides a voice, because Barty sadly passed away on December the 23rd, 2000, before the second version had closed. The original attraction began with the Omnimover vehicles, floating in the clouds and seen a silhouette of a strange blip mixed with a vacuum cleaner and hearing the humming and singing of its pilot. In the next scene, the riders come right next to the vessel and the pilot. An old man with a red beard dressed in a blue suit and a top hat. He introduces himself as the Dreamfinder, who was voiced by Chuck McCann, and saying he uses his vehicle called the Dreammobile or Dreamcatcher by some fans to collect dreams and ideas to create all sorts of things new. Soon he creates a figment of his imagination. Two tiny wings, eyes big and yellow, horns of a steer but a lovable fellow. From head to tail he's a royal purple pigment and there voila you've got a figment. Both Dreamfinder and the Dragon Figment imagine things to fill the idea bag. When the idea bag is full, 
Dreamfinder declares that the ideas need to be emptied in the dream port, which, as he says, is never far away when you use your imagination. Regarding the scene where Figment is introduced, Baxter said, If you're telling the story of the Little Mermaid or Snow White, everybody already knows who they are, what they talk like and how they sing. But in a ride like Imagination, you're not familiar with the characters going into it. This opening scene allows you to meet Dreamfinder, understand how he created Figment and get to know Figment's personality. So, at the end of these four minutes, you know the characters. The Omnimovers leave the side of the Dreammobile and enter Dreamport's storage room, which includes a massive contraption for sorting ideas. Also in the room are numerous objects, including boxed applause, a plasma ball, and a birdcage of musical notes. After leaving the storage room, the ride continues through several rooms representing art, literature, the performing arts and science. The art room was mostly white coloured and had a large painting Dreamfinder was making using a large fibre optic paintbrush, a carousel with giant carousel animals and a pot of rainbows held by figment. The literature room was mostly focused on suspenseful tales and had Dreamfinder playing a massive organ with words coming out of it. Words that turned into their meanings. A massive book featuring the Raven from Edgar Allan Poe's poem, Corin Menacingly, and books about horrible monsters Figment tried to keep closed. The performing arts had Figment trying on costumes backstage while Dreamfinder conducted a laser show in the manner of an orchestral conductor. The last of the rooms is Science, featuring a large machine that Dreamfinder was operating that took a closer look at the workings of nature, such as the growth of plants, the formation of crystals from minerals, and also looking into space. At the end, Dreamfinder told Figment and the audience that imagination is the key to unlocking the hidden wonders of the world. The ride then enters the final show scene. As the riders' pictures were taken, they saw Figment surrounded by several movie screens of him, being a scientist, a mountain climber, a pirate, a superhero, a tap dancer, a ship's captain, a cowboy and an athlete. Dreamfinder, who is behind a movie camera, gives the riders one last inspiring message and told them to use their newly found sparks of imagination in the image works and the on-ride photo was shown on a screen next to the camera. The ride then exited into image works, which was meant to be a creative playground of the future. Imageworks was an interactive playground located above the ride where guests could play with their imaginations. Those activities included interactive exhibits such as a giant kaleidoscope, pin screens, a rainbow corridor and a drama stage which gave guests the opportunity to put themselves in their own movie. The Imageworks section of the Imagination Pavilion opened five months before Journey into Imagination. It was a huge hit among guests. Dreamfinder and Figment were an integral part of Epcot Centre until their attraction was closed in October 1998, when corporate sponsors Kodak decided it was time to remove the aging attraction rather than update it. Journey into Your Imagination opened on October the 1st, 1999, during what would be likely considered the low point in the history of Walt Disney Imagineering and Disney Parks. Exploration. Excitation. From inside a brain. In all its generations. Comes inspiration. Illumination. The 
the Walt Disney World Resort and the Eastman Kodak Company proudly presents a journey into your imagination. Baxter even referred to it as a nightmare during the virtual reception. Guest relations cast members at Walt Disney World were bombarded with complaints from guests on how bad the ride was and how they missed Figment and Dreamfinder dearly. The complaints were so numerous that the ride was closed less than two years later in the fall of 2001 and then Imagineers were tasked with fixing the ride on a very limited budget. Fast forward to June the 2nd, 2002, Journey into Imagination with Figment opened and the building is now known as the Imagination Pavilion. Guests were overjoyed to see Figment return home and to hear the classic One Little Spark theme reinstated. Guests can now explore their five senses, with Figment leading guests throughout their journey into the imagination of Dr. Channing's sensory lab. After the attraction, guests discover the image works, the What If Labs, an interactive play area based on all the senses. Also today, guests can visit image works for Figment themed merchandise, from plushies to apparel and more. However, this third version of the attraction always felt like a temporary fix until something better could be drawn up. That was 2002 and it is now 2022 and this ride is still open. In fact, it has become the longest running attraction to ever occupy the space, even outliving the original attraction. Baxter has been called back to work as creative advisor for the Princess and the Frog overlay of Splash Mountain and he seems eager to work on another overhaul. He has also brought up the possibility of doing a feature length animated movie starring Figment. Back in early September of 2021, an episode of One Day at Disney showed an interesting project between Studio Lab and the Walt Disney Animation Studios, with sculptures working on various clay and digital maquettes of Figment. Back in the 1980s, a set of Figment educational cartoons which were planned and piloted but were never launched. So, Baxter's fantastical idea may not be far out of reach, especially with the company's increased focus on streaming. I wouldn't mind settling down to watch a Figment movie on Disney Plus. How about you? In a historic moment, Epcot has now changed the park layout, getting rid of Future World and creating four district neighborhoods to further organize the park. The name changes officially happened on October the 1st, 2021, right in time for Walt Disney World's 50th anniversary celebration. The new neighborhood's name for this section now is World Nature, and it is also the home of other favorite attractions such as Soarin', Living with the Land, and the Seas with Nemo and Friends. And on a last note, it is still possible to see remnants of the original Journey into Imagination Dark Ride today at Epcot. The original area music for the Imagination Pavilion can still be heard in the bathrooms located at the side of the pavilion. Instead of heading into the main attraction, guests can walk to the right hand side and around to the rear of the building to find a quiet and often overlooked restroom with low foot traffic and charming music from the attraction. This restroom is always clean and calm. Did you also know there is a nod to the original Journey into Imagination in the current Journey into Imagination with Figment Q? The plasma orbs from the Dream Port can be found on some ride theming shelves located halfway through the queue, as well as a very subtle reference to Dreamfinder with the name Dean Finder, which can be found on one of the office doors. In 
Imageworks, you can see the physical remnants of a turntable used in the original Journey into Imagination. You can also feel parts of the original track in the floor, if your feet are sensitive enough. It may be hard to hear with all the young imaginations running wild at Imageworks, but the original Journey into Imagination audio is used as a backing to all the instrument-based exhibits, without the vocals of course. In the Disney and Pixar Short Film Festival, you can still find where Journey into Imagination and the Magic Eye Theatre used to connect. It has since been blocked off and become a dead end. And our final one, a small section of one of the dream catchers used in the original Journey into Imagination could be found hanging inside Mouse Gears until its recent refurb. Now this piece is owned by the Walt Disney Archive, which is a company archive of the Walt Disney Company. This company was founded in 1970 by Dave Smith to collect and preserve historic material related to Walt Disney and the Disney Company. Recently the Dreamcatcher was back in Walt Disney World for Destination D23 and on display at Disney's Contemporary Resort. Would you be interested in an overhaul of the current journey into imagination with Figment at Epcot? Or would you prefer to see the original version brought back? Or even a brand new version of the journey into imagination? Let me know in the comments below. And now before I leave you, I will share with you one of my home movie recordings of the original journey into imagination ride. This video was recorded around the beginning of October 1998, just before the ride closed for good.